talking about the Cyprus. Okay, you tell me when you're ready. Okay. I'm ready. My name is uh, Jim Bachheim. I'm from. My name is Jim Bachheim. I'm with the Department of Soil Science at the University of Wisconsin in Madison, in the USA, and I have been asked to give some information about uh, soil taxonomy. Soil taxonomy began in the 1950s because the previous classification systems were based primarily on presumed soil genesis rather than actual soil properties. So there was a move in the 1950s to establish a new classification system that was based on soil properties and not on anticipated soil genesis. And so under the leadership of Guy Smith, uh, a new classification system was developed and it went through a series of seven approximations. And then finally in 1960, the seventh approximation was published and that was the first version of soil taxonomy. And then in 1975, uh, uh, soil taxonomy, uh, more or less a, a sort of final version was published which included a lot of amendments, a lot of changes from 1960. Uh, and that then was the official system. Um, and the intention of the system was to be a global system, not just to be a national system, but to be able to be used all over the globe. And another important concept was that the system was intended to be versatile. In other words, if new soils were discovered somewhere, uh, the system could be changed to reflect those, uh, those new soils. And the system also employed, uh, since it was considered to be a natural system, it employed um, uh, Greek and Latin derivatives to establish the names. To be sort of similar to you know, plant classification and animal classification. So the system, uh, is called a hierarchical system. It has 12 orders. Orders are the coarsest uh, level in the system. And the 12 orders are based primarily on uh, diagnostic surface horizons and subsurface horizons. Surface horizons we call epipedons. We have eight diagnostic sur surface horizons that are used in soil taxonomy. And then we have 19 subsurface horizons that are employed at the highest level in identifying, identifying the soil orders. The orders are then divided into suborders. And we have 65 suborders in soil taxonomy, and they are based primarily on soil climate. Wet soils would be aquic, uh, we have soils that are continuously moist, like in the, in the tropics, and so on. So soil climate becomes very important, um, especially at the suborder level, but for some of the soil orders, other parameters are used as well. And then the order, the suborders, are divided into great groups. And again, based on key uh, pedogenic properties. And there are 40, 344 great groups in soil taxonomy. And then the great groups are broken down into subgroups. And there are two kinds of subgroups. There are um, extra grades and there are intergrades. Intergrades are great groups that illustrate how this particular soil perhaps uh, 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 is associated with other soils of other orders or suborders on the landscape. And then the extra grades are for soils that are not similar to other soils on the landscape you know, and other classes. And then the subgroups are broken up into families. And families, some of the properties would be the mineralogy, would be the soil temperature regime, the soil moisture regime, the cation exchange capacity, uh, properties that are especially important for plant growth. And then the families are broken down into soil series. We have in the United States 23,000 soil series. So to conclude then, soil taxonomy is a global system 
It's a natural system based on soil properties, and it is a system that is employed, that is used in about 50 countries around the world. Thank you. Obrigado. Thank you for.